or a 1 0. is a pop culture icon, Golden Globe, SAG, and Emmy award-winning actress, producer, and designer with more than 30 years in show business. Take a look. Sarah Jessica Parker first got her big break playing Annie on Broadway. She first appeared on the silver screen playing Rusty and Footloose and followed it with roles as a carefree dancing teen in Girls Just Want to Have Fun and a quirky witch in Hocus Pocus. <laughs> In 1998, a little-known show called Sex and the City burst onto the scene and catapulted Sarah Jessica Parker into an internationally known actress and fashion icon. I spent $40,000 on shoes and I have no place to live? I will literally be the old woman who lived in her shoes. Now she's giving her fans what they've always wanted, a brand new shoe person clothing line at Nordstrom, aptly titled SJP by Sarah Jessica Parker. And I had the chance to sit down with SJP to catch up on her new shoe line family and her style inspiration, so check it out. Welcome to Chicago. Thank you. And thanks for coming to my favorite store of all time. Oh, it's my pleasure. I think I grew up in Nordstrom. Did you really? I wish I'd grown up in a Nordstrom. (laughs) So what took so long for the shoe line? Well, I think it was really about finding the right partner. The opportunity kept presenting itself, and I I found myself sort of surprised that I wasn't able to say yes. And over time, it, it occurred to me that it was, I hadn't found the partner that I knew I wanted to make a shoe with. And I think in large part, it has to do with the fact that I feel very honor bound to the women that watched Sex in the City for all those years. They were incredibly dedicated and committed. And obsessed with your shoes. And, <laughs> and they, they enjoyed the fashion and I didn't want to make a shoe that wouldn't stand up to that relationship. You know, I felt honor bound in some way mm-hmm. and so when I finally had the courage to ask George if he would consider this partnership and he said yes, then it became a reality and here we are about a year later talking about it and it's been a, a thrill few days to hit city after city after city and finally see these shoes on women and, and um, boy they're looking good so and they are looking good I might say so myself you're wearing the mink bobby yes. it's named for my mom well let's talk about that because every shoe has a name and right. so they're special to you you're wearing the carry which I'm wearing the carry actually is nude. my fave oh good yeah oh, good. in I, every color yep well we have it right now we have it in um, this nude color we have it in uh, black which is really beautiful right. also it's and because the purple. of the grow green right the grow green sort of I don't know how it managed to it sort of manages to distinguish itself in some way you know in a very wonderfully filled shoe category sure. it's a nice way to sort of stand out I, I say that we've you know decorated the derriere of each shoe <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong um, with decorating the derriere no, nothing at all so how closely are Carrie and Sarah Jessica we look alike. Uh-huh. Um, we Is share, Sarah Jessica we obsessed share with the shoes? same skeleton. Okay. Um, I love shoes, and I've always loved shoes, and I've always loved well-made shoes, but I think there's a sort of fevered, reckless affection that Carrie has that okay. I, I don't have. I think I've always been more conservative. I've always been worried about not having money. I grew up with not a lot of money, so I'm very aware of what that feels like. Uh-huh. And I've always preferred to have what I needed versus what I wanted. Ooh. So only until I had more money was I able to really purchase for no good reason. Right. Um, but I love shoes, and clearly I do because I spent the last year, you know, working diligently on this collection. But it's a different kind of love, I think. Right, right. Have you always had this fashionista like <laughs> sense about you like even when you were a little girl well my mother was pretty strict we wore what we were told to wear okay. and there was a sort of uniform in our home I mean not really but we wore dresses every day we wore grow gray really? hair ribbons every day in our hair the boys wore pants girls wore dresses um, and very old-fashioned you know we wore like gray woolen jumpers uh-huh. and black watch plaid jumpers oh. and hand smock dresses um, braids ponytails braids Braids, not ponytails. Oh, no ponytails. Braids or loops, um, which are braids when you loop them. Oh, yeah. 
Yes. Um, but I always loved beautiful things, as did my mother. Even though we didn't have money, she always loved beautiful things. And when you're the poorest family in a sort of middle class neighborhood, there's yeah. like church tag sales and things where you can find beautiful things for sure. no money. Sure. And so my mother was very industrious. So I learned, I think my eye kind of adapted and developed watching my mother try to make the best of what we had. Mm -hmm. And how do you incorporate that into your own shoe line? Because is it going to be affordable for the everyday woman, comfortable, all those things? Um, well, I think affordability is relative. I don't think, sadly, that these shoes are affordable to everyone. I mean, I would love for that to be the case. But the problem is it's a complicated endeavor. A lesser shoe tends to not last long. Sure. It's not leather usually. Um, I wanted to make these shoes in Italy. I wanted to make them at, at a price point that was accessible to a lot of people. Sure. Um, we start at $195. Our top shoe is $485, $495, I think at most. So in the big scheme, it's considered an affordable yeah. shoe. But we want the shoe to last forever. We want it to look relevant forever. We want, we really wanted to re-examine and revisit the single sole. Mm -hmm. Color is neutral. And so that when a woman who invested in this purchase went to her closet in three and four years, she would still want to put this shoe right. on. And we hope we've achieved that. Who's your fashion icon? Who do you look up and who inspires you? Well, I think the best example is, you know, to, to answer in, in all candor is women on the street all day long, you know, women that I've seen in the pop-up shop in New York City or in Seattle or Los Angeles, um, a woman named Denise who I saw wearing stirrups um, and she was wearing the lady with the red, the geranium grow grain shoe uh -huh. with stirrups and I, I thought it was fantastic so I'm wearing stirrups today with my <laughs> carries but I think it's the woman on the street that is most inspiring to me because they come from all over, they're all different shapes and sizes and colors and mm -hmm. ethnic backgrounds. Right. And when you see someone be themselves and, and really kind of feel good about themselves when, when they walk out the door, that's pretty inspiring. Right. And do you think being in New York City, you see it's such a melting pot when you talk about that and you see so much there. That's probably got to be an inspiration too. Oh, most assuredly. And taking the subway, I think, is the greatest way of all to see people. You know, I, I was doing a plane in New York and I took the subway to work every day and took it home and standing on the platform and I've always stared. My father told me when I was a young girl, he said, stop staring, you're making a, a spectacle of yourself. But I was like, but I want to see everything. And, you know, seeing some of the girls, you know, from uptown, um, some of the Puerto Rican girls who can pull their hair back so beautifully uh -huh. and line their mouth and the way they choose to wear jeans or women that are coming in from Staten Island or from lower Manhattan. It's just a great way to see what women are doing and the story they want to tell about themselves. Sarah Jessica is going to tell us what celeb style she admires. Later, ABC7 Eyewitness News anchor Joel Daly is going to be here.